Waterloo Region depends on the Grand River for 20 to 25 percent of its drinking water. Treating water from the Grand River takes more work and energy than treating groundwater. Water in a river is exposed to human and animal activity, plus the effects of weather. The journey begins at the Grand River in the Hidden Valley area near the Highway 8 bridge between Kitchener and Cambridge. A weir redirects the water into a low lift. Inside this building are screens that keep out large debris and branches. The water then moves through a pipe to a large reservoir with four storage tanks. The reservoir can hold 142 million liters of water, enough to fill 2,800 backyard swimming pools. The reservoir serves two purposes. First, it gives time for sand and dirt to settle out of the water. The reservoir also builds in a safety delay. If the region of Waterloo learns of contamination in the Grand River, say a chemical spill from an accident, the reservoir provides several days of water while the river is cleaned up. After the water leaves the reservoir, a pump helps to move it 10 kilometers uphill through a large underground pipe to the water treatment plant in Mannheim. The treatment plant is on one of the highest elevation points in Waterloo Region. Being up so high allows the use of gravity to help water flow downhill through the treatment plant. Using less energy reduces costs and greenhouse gases associated with climate change. The treatment plant can treat up to 840 liters of water every second, but normally it produces between 400 and 600 liters per second, about 40 to 50 million liters of water every day. The water first enters one of two raw water tanks before entering the plant to begin the treatment process. Each tank can supply the plant with about 60 minutes of water. Inside the plant, the water completes a multi-step treatment process. Step 1 combines two steps, coagulation and flocculation. A polymer is added to the water that helps tiny particles such as sand or algae stick together and form large clumps called flocks. Look closely and you might be able to see the spinning wheel slowly moving at the bottom of the tank. The spinning wheel helps to mix the polymer with the water. Step 2 is sedimentation. Water flows through the plate settler from the bottom up. The plate provides a surface area for the flocks or clumps of dirt to fall onto and slide down to the bottom of the tank. The flocks are then pumped outside to be dried and treated. Step 3 is ozonation. Ozone gas disinfects the water by deactivating bacteria and viruses as well as improving the taste, smell and color of the water. Ozone gas is produced at the treatment plant from liquid oxygen. After the ozone gas has done its job in the water, the ozone gas molecules change back to normal oxygen. Step 4 is filtration. The water moves through layers of sand and activated carbon to remove any remaining silt, viruses, bacteria, or other impurities. Filtration also helps to remove cloudiness from the water and make it clear. Important for the next step. Step 5 is disinfection using ultraviolet radiation. The water flows through a large pipe with special lamps that shine ultraviolet or UV rays through the clear water. This instantly deactivates all sorts of pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, and other microorganisms that can make people sick. Step 6 is disinfection using chlorination. Small amounts of chlorine added to the water disinfects it for viruses and bacteria. Chlorine doesn't kill every type of microorganism, which is why UV radiation is included as the previous step. And unlike UV radiation, a bit of residual chlorine stays in the water to keep it clean as it travels through underground pipes to your home. Each step is carefully monitored 24 hours a day, 7 days a week from a high-tech control room. Water operators can track what is happening throughout the plant and start or stop the system. The plant has two separate treatment processes. If any process is shut down, the other side of the plant can keep operating. Testing the water is an important part of the treatment process to make sure the water is clean and safe to drink. The water is tested before, during, and after treatment. Ontario has a Safe Drinking Water Act, 
which sets the legal safety standards for municipalities. These rules are strict and require regular testing of drinking water. It takes about eight hours from the time the water enters the treatment plant until it leaves as clean drinking water. After the water leaves the Mannheim water treatment plant, it is mixed with groundwater from nearby wells before entering the distribution system that delivers water to homes in Waterloo Region.